it going everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Drive Mix Pod channel. Today's video I am super excited to present. I know a lot of you have been waiting for it. In case you haven't been following along, I recently installed an engine cold air intake system into my 2019 ND Miata. Now engine claims improvements of up to 8 horsepower and 7 pound feet of torque just by installing the intake, no additional tuning required. They even provide dyno charts on their website to back up these claims. So I decided to put my car on the dyno and run some acceleration tests to see if this is actually true or not. So let's jump right into the results, starting with the stock intake dyno run. So I took the car to CFT here in Orlando earlier this year, and it put down a rather impressive 169 wheel horsepower and 145 pound feet of torque to the rear wheels with the stock intake. I ran it again after installing the engine intake and it only put down 156 horsepower and 142 pound feet of torque. I was actually quite surprised by these numbers, but one thing worth mentioning is that both of these dyno runs were done a few months apart from each other. So the weather did play a little bit of a factor. It was actually four degrees colder and 14% less humid when I ran with the stock intake versus the engine intake. Now this may not account for that total difference in power, but it definitely plays a factor. So because of this, I decided to do some further acceleration testing to see whether or not the engine intake provides any performance gains. To do this testing, I basically went out and did zero to 60 runs three times with the stock intake and with the engine intake. And then I did three 50 to 80 mile per hour runs in third gear with both intakes as well. So for the zero to 60 runs with the stock intake, the first one, I timed it at 7.06 seconds. The second, 7.49 seconds. And then the third, 7.05, for an average of 7.2 seconds. After installing the engine intake again, now both of these runs were about two hours apart from each other, so weather was not a factor. The first run with the engine intake was 7.51 seconds, second was 7.56, and the third 7.79 for an average of 7.62. I then did 50 to 80 mile an hour runs in third gear. Again, the stock intake performed better. The first one with the stock intake did it in 6.07 second 6.32 and the third 6.18 for an average of 6.16 seconds with the engine intake it did 6.75 for the first run 6.91 for the second and 6.99 for the third for an average of 6.89 seconds so the car was an average of 0.42 seconds faster to 60 and 0.73 seconds faster from 50 to 80. So I know some of you are probably saying, wow, those are really slow zero to 60 times. And you're absolutely right. The car could definitely do better with a better driver, but we're really looking for the difference between the stock and the engine intake. And we saw better acceleration all across the board with the stock intake and it also made more power on the dyno. All three of these tests combined basically proves that the engine intake did absolutely nothing. It actually hurt the performance on my car rather than improvement. So why does engine claim extra power and performance from their intake? Well, I have a couple theories as to why I got the results that I did. The first one being tuning. While engine says that you don't need additional tuning to run this intake, and that is true, it will not throw a check engine light on the car, it runs just fine. You will need tuning to achieve optimal performance from the intake, just like you would with any other performance modification. This is evident when we take a look at the dyno charts for the stock and the engine intake. Notice how the horsepower and torque curves for the stock intake are much smoother than those with the engine intake. This shows that the ECU is better tuned for the stock intake versus the engine. The second thing here to consider is that engine developed this intake back when the ND Miata first came out and it had the ND1 engine. Now this one is an ND2, it's 2019. So basically it has a larger throttle body, larger valves and larger ports and it's flowing a lot more air. For that reason, this intake might actually be a restriction because it was designed for the ND1 engine which flows less air. Again, that's just a theory I have, may or may not be true, additional testing would be required to confirm that. And then the last point is, while it's labeled as a cold air intake, it's really not much of a cold air intake at all. The filter sits right in the engine bay, pulling in that hot engine bay air, especially from the exhaust side over there, whereas the stock intake draws air from behind the front grill. It goes through this funnel you see here and goes directly into the engine. No engine bay air enters into the intake. So if the intake actually hurt performance, why the heck would you buy it? Well, a couple reasons. Number one, it provides a great sound compared to the stock intake, and I think it looks better in the engine bay as well. I noticed a lot more noise, especially under wide open throttle acceleration runs with the engine intake. I missed those already. So if you care more about the looks or the sound, or you're someone who wants to tune the car for maximum performance, 
you might be interested in getting one of these intakes. Otherwise, I would say just stick with the stock intake. Mazda spent a lot of time and money developing it and it really shows from these results. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video. As always, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. I can't wait to see you in the next video.